What up, Math Scholar? <laughs> what's up, Math Scholars? That was my daughter. She was just had a bunch of candy in her mouth, so she had trouble saying, What's up, Math Scholars? <laughs> um, we are about to watch part two of the SLO study guide. So we're at number 21. Uh, this weekend, you do have a little bit of homework. There's an SLO review in Polaris. It's 20 questions. It is resumable, so you can just do, you know, five questions now, five questions later till you get done. All 20 of those questions are due Tuesday. All right, so they do give you the formula here in number 21. We are investing $4,500. That's our P. Um, the rate is going to be 9%, so don't forget to put it in as a decimal. And we're finding how much we have after eight years. Um, hopefully you remember where the E button is. Um, to get E, you do second LN. And then you get the answer of 9244.95, rounded to the nearest penny, since we're working in money. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you need to, um, if I'm going too fast. 22 is press as a single logarithm, if you remember from the logarithm chapter. Addition is friends with multiplication. It's subtraction that's friends with division. So we will combine by multiplying the 18 and the 6. So it's log base A of 108. Say hi. Say hello, Mascola. Hello, Mascola. <laughs> 23. Solve for x to the nearest hundred. So we got 2.35 to the x equals 54. Uh, 2.35 is a base. The only way to cancel a base is to do a logarithm of that same base. So you're going to do log base 2.35 on both sides. That'll cancel. Uh, just to refresh where the log button is, math, up, up. That's for my calculator. Every calculator is a little bit different. Um, so my in the little box, it's 2.35. And in the big box, it's a 54. I got 4.67. That is the nearest hundredth. Two decimal points to the right. Uh, two digits to the right of the decimal point. I don't need you to keep practicing your drawing. I've got Mayla practicing her drawing on the whiteboard beside me. All right, 24. We're going to hit it up with the left, right, center. The guy on the left, the little guy is your base. And the number on the right is going to be the exponent. And then the center is 5x plus 9. That's the answer. Uh, figure out what 5 to the third is. 125. Uh, finish it off by subtracting 9 over to the left-hand side. 116, and then dividing both sides by 5. Twenty-three point two. Alright, time for a little stat world. So here's your here's your buttons you're gonna hit. Stat edit, and then you'll put your data in and then you'll do stat calculate and in this case we'll be looking for the exponential equation so you want the exponential uh, regression line so here goes stat edit put in the numbers 1 through 6 in for x alrighty in your y column 8.1 13.2. You do want to triple check you have all these numbers incorrectly because if you even have one number incorrectly, your equation will be off. Again, this is the paper pencil portion of the Polaris test, which is next Wednesday. I'm just triple checking all my numbers, all right? And now you'll do stat calculate, so stat right arrow. Go all the way down until you find the exponential regression line. Right, so they give us all this data, and they tell us they want the format to be y equals a times b to the x. All right, so my calculator is telling me that a is 5.42, uh, b is 1.57, and then x would be the exponent. So there is your equation.
26, the variables x and y vary inversely. That's a super awkward way of saying y equals k over x. You do have to keep in mind that y always x is a dependent variable, which means it's on the left-hand side of the equation by itself. Use the given values to write an equation relating x and y. So we have related x and y so far, but we do need to solve for the constant k. Um, so we'll stick that value of 8 in for x, and now we'll solve for k by multiplying by 8 on both sides. So that's my equation for k, and then the equation that relates y to x would have k in it. So it's almost like step 3 when we would do our four-step method in chapter 5. They want you to do step 3 for your solution in this problem. Uh, we're going to simplify this rational expression if possible. Don't do any illegal math moves that will send you to math jail. What I just did there is a total illegal math move. Um, I do think this is a little bit of a typo. All these variables should be the same, so go ahead and make that an N for me. On the top, if we were going to factor, we would use old-fashioned factoring technique. Can you think of numbers that multiply to 30 that would add up to 11? It's 6 and 5. And then the bottom, it would be n plus 6 with n minus 6. That's a difference of perfect squares. Now that we have everything factored, you can cancel top-bottom. And our final answer is n plus 5 over n minus 6. Do you remember how to divide two fractions? You multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to make it a multiply sign and flip our second fraction upside down. Now some people like doing crosswise canceling and top-down canceling at this point, and some people like waiting till the very end to cancel. It's totally up to you. Let's just wait till the end. Um, we'll have 12k squared z to the 10th over 15k to the 6th and z to the 3rd. Uh, 16 over 15, do those have a common factor we can divide out? I don't think so. Um, with the k's, we'll do bigger minus smaller. Put our answer where the bigger lives. So 6 minus 2 is 4. Put that answer down below. So k to the 4th is in the bottom. And then 10 minus 3 is 7. So the z's are going to be z to the 7th, and that's going to go up top. I'm empty. I want to do All right, perform the indicated operations and simplify. We do need to compile our least common multiple slash least common denominator. It really is the same thing um, in order for us to be able to add those fractions. So we have this fraction here. It's already, it's already in lowest factored form. Uh, so we would put it on our checkmark list, x plus 9. And then same with our x minus 9. So our common denominator is going to be x plus 9 x minus 9. So you kind of at this point, look at your old denominator and look at your new denominator and think about what you would need to multiply to get there. So our old denominator up top on the left is x plus 9. Our new one is x plus 9 times x minus 9. So you do need to multiply by x minus 9 on top and bottom. Whatever you do on the top, you do on the bottom with fractions. And I'll distribute that 5 in, 5x minus 45. The bottom right fraction up here at the top uh, is x minus 9, so I'm going to need to multiply by x plus 9 to get it to where it needs to go. When you distribute the 2 in, it's 2x plus 18. And then we add straight across. Well, it's x plus 9, x minus 9 on the bottom. And adding the like term to the top, 7x plus negative 45 combined with 18 is negative 27. You can either leave it like that, or if you really want to be scholarly, you could foil out that bottom, x squared minus 81. All right, we're making great time when we have one more. And then I guess you'll have the rest of the period to start the Polaris review. It's all uh, multiple choice in Polaris. It's a proportion. Um, you do need to remember to group these binomials here, but we're going to be setting up cross multiplication. 12 gets multiplied by x minus 8. 7 gets multiplied by x minus 5.
Let's distribute our 12 in. 12x minus 96 equals 7x minus 35. I would probably move the 7x next to make it a 5x on the left-hand side. Then you can move your 96 by adding negative 35 plus 96 is 61, and 61 divided by 5, 12.2. All right, if we went too fast through any of this, feel free to pull this video up again um, and go back to the things you need to review. I will be available for questions on Monday. We have a study party Monday after school till 310. We have one again Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning at 650. So plenty more time to ask your questions before the SLO. Um, hopefully you have a safe and happy weekend. Bye.